This coverage of MWC is brought to you by Bitdefender Mobile Security. Hey guys, it's Darcy Lacave here. We're here at Imagination Technologies, and I'm here with Alex Voika. He's a technology PR executive with Imagination, and he knows a lot of stuff about GPUs, about <laughs> mobility, so we're going to pick his brain for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, GPUs, CPUs, yeah, you name it. So why does Apple continue to choose you? You mentioned that they're going to continue licensing your technology. Yeah, so recently Apple announced that they're going to be continuing their relationship with us uh, on PowerVR yeah. video and graphics. Um, continuing to use future families of PowerVR graphics and video for their SOCs. Historically, PowerVR started out in the desktop space. Um, we uh, had some design, design wins in the 90s with desktop providers and uh, console makers. But then we made this decision to switch to mobile because we, we saw that the market was about to explode in smartphones and tablets. So we made this conscious decision to sort of leave that space behind and move to mobile. Uh, because we, our architecture was inherently much more efficient than uh, traditional IMR, immediate mode rendered based architectures. Um, so our architecture is something called TBDR, tile based deferred rendering. Okay. It's probably the only architecture right now, GPU architecture, that has this ability yeah. to split the scenes into tiles and then defer rendering, which means only the visible pixels in a scene are actually rendered. Nice. And this reduces complexity, it offers much better performance, and it lowers power consumption as well. You know, the analysts from Gartner and others, they're saying that we're going to be looking at 12 to 15, 20 million units of these 3840 by 2160 displays, the 4K displays, um, you know, on sub 10 inch, 9 inch, 5 inch platforms. Um, mobile devices with 4K resolution. Yeah. You know, um, some of the more Right, people like Jonathan Franklin, shout out to you, um, are saying that it's ridiculous and that you know we don't have any current SOC or no GPU manufacturer or license or has the technology to be able to sustain um, a reasonable expectation of battery life while being able to push out smooth frame rates for that kind of resolution. And we're talking about 2015 for this kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. can you talk to about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, again, uh, Power VR today ships in devices with 4K screens. So we have smart TVs that have a range of smart TVs that have uh, PowerVR GPUs powering the graphical UI, um, handling things like uh, web rendering, web browsing rendering, and, and so on. So we're already able to show that, look, PowerVR can comfortably drive 4K displays. But those, are, those devices are usually smart TVs. Um, not, not mobile. <laughs> not mobile. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that we don't have the technology to be able to basically fit that into something like a phone or a tablet if a certain OEM would, would want us to want to push in that direction. I mean, it's pretty obvious that Apple is going to... I mean, so we're looking at, what, 2048 by uh, 1536 resolution uh, yeah, on so some of these? Like so we, Power VR has been the leader in high resolution. Uh, we were the first GPU to be able to support uh, at first, when we, we had um, HD resolution, and then we went to full HD, yeah. uh, and now we're kind of like sort of moving towards 4K yeah. in, in, in certain cases. And we've always been the wow. GPU of choice for people who want to have that mm -hmm. high resolution. Yeah. But we have a, a certain range of solutions that, like I said, are, are aiming at the high end. We've uh, recently introduced the GX6650, which is a six cluster design with 192 cores. Um, that's being able to support the latest APIs, so OpenGL ES, OpenGL, OpenCL, RenderScript, the full set of, of mobile and embedded APIs. Yeah. We believe that's obviously going to be a, a real like, performance killer cool. for everyone else. Yeah. Uh, we believe that it's probably the best GPU design out there at the moment. And, you know, just one last thing, you know, with reference to um, sort of apps versus the web, you know? Um, even uh, on an actual desktop legacy um, laptop or a desktop, a lot of uh, developers, are, at least uh, not just developers, but consumers are wondering, you know, seeing these demos of you know really high intensity first person shooters run yeah. in the web browser. And I'm wondering to what end uh, is this going to be achievable in a mobile sense? Um, you know, and in terms of standardization of OpenGL, like you guys are big yeah. proponents of that. Apple works with OpenGL really closely. Um, if you could just speak to that just a little bit, I'd appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, we've had developers who've been um, developing some content applications, particularly games yeah. for uh, the rogue architecture, so the yeah. latest PowerVR cores. And their feedback so far has been that it's amazing. 
they were able to essentially the, that the game that you're seeing behind you actually is an Xbox 360 game mm -hmm. with the assets of a console game just ported directly to a mobile device yeah. and it just runs and they were really impressed yeah. by the fact that they were able to reuse all that content they had from the desktop space just change the API from a desktop to a mobile API which is minimal effort and then it just works mm -hmm. so yes. we're seeing a lot of de developers uh, from unity or epic and uh, com guys. EA companies that we have close yeah. relationships with yeah. being really amazed by how much uh, they can achieve on mm -hmm. the latest PowerVR GPUs. Really cool. So, Adreno versus Imagination, PowerVR, you know, versus Mali, um, you know, and obviously versus Tegra or K1. Really, in terms of how much power they're consuming for how much detail and complexity they're able to put out, what is the industry's best solution? What is the most leading technology right now? Obviously, it's PowerVR. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to quickly back that up with some okay. facts. Sure. So, um, for example, GFX Bench yeah. from Kishanti yeah, yeah. recently introduced this, um, uh, this term um, called long evolution, a long term evolution, which is they essentially run the benchmark 30 times in a row. Yeah. And then they measure the difference between the initial run and the final run. Because the heat. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so we see that for PowerVR, the latest PowerVR um, cores, they're able to smoothly maintain performance. There's no performance draw between first run, last run. Whereas everyone else, unfortunately, has different different drops, yeah. but they all have drops in performance. Interesting. And we believe that's a unique advantage that is obviously, because it's a real application, we can obviously uh, see that happening in games or web browsers, or anything that uses a GPU, a graphical UI. Um, and that's just one fact, yeah. uh, how you can easily back that up and mm -hmm. say, look, this is the best technology, PowerVR is the best GPU, because you run this application 30 times and every time you get the exact same result. Yeah. Well, I hope you uh, you know continue doing the good work you do. You know, thank and I uh, really want to say big thank you for your time, being able to pick your brain. No problem. All right. Well, we look forward to speaking with you again. Yeah. No so, problem. It's uh, Dark Slack of with Android Authority and Imagination Technologies reporting live from Old World Congress 2014.